going to look at the uh, Crepuscular Ray demos that come with the uh, Asset Store package. Uh, there's three of them in total. There's a uh, this th uh, low poly 3D scene. There's uh, another uh, 3D scene using again like this using the, the Unity uh, terrain uh, game object. Uh, this one's really basic in this scene. If you have a look, I'll put in some very simple. Um, very low poly meshes, this is why I've called it a low poly scene um, and also a 2D uh, scene as well to show how it can be used uh, in 2D games as well as a 3D scene so in this um, 3D low poly version we've, um, we've got a light source attached to a sphere the sphere's got some physics on it so it's going to bounce around the scene uh, my camera, I've got a uh, tracking uh, look at target so that's just going to keep an eye on basically on the sphere as it bounces around the scene so we can we can focus on the, on the rays that are coming off this this light source so as you can see we've got um, the ray script here so you hand it at the flare the flare can be any uh, alpha texture you like I've got uh, there's a few so uh, I'm, with the asset I'm providing these a uh, few um, alphas, alpha textures, so flare, flare two, three, they're just varying color really, there's no big difference in them, but you can produce whatever alpha alpha you want to use in the, in the light ray, and that's used uh, for the light source to, the, that's casting the rays. Um, we also need a point light, a, a source position effectively. Uh, when it's a point light, it will use the, the light source's position. If it's directional, it will use the light source's direction and it will also position that light source for us in the scene. So you'll always, your light source will always be at the, at the right angle to your camera. We've got a few variables we can play with in here as well. Uh, we've got density, decay, weight, exposure. Uh, illumination decay they all affect the obviously the the way the ray looks and we'll, we'll have a play with those in the scene in a moment um, they're very um, sensitive so if you you know you set them too high too low the effect changes quite a bit um, and we can also we've got a apply aspect ratio so when it renders the, the flare uh, texture uh, it's going to take the uh, aspect ratio into account so we've got a screen that's wider than it is tall so it's not square uh, screen effectively so w what would happen if that was off you'd have like a squashed longer wider and shorter uh, flare than you would uh, perfectly round one or one that matches the flare texture as it, as it actually is uh, you might want that effect so I'll put it in so you can switch it on switch it off you can also <coughs> set the uh, source intensity color uh, and light source size now these are set to zero black and zero that's because the shade will take the point light or the light source settings so in this case we've got a white light with an intensity of three and the size of the the flare the flare um, will be uh, based on the scale which is that you'll use the magnitude of the scale so this light source is just a one by one by one so as well as that we've got a rotate light source this means that you can if you want to rotate the light source um, the, the flare so it gives you a bit of a different looking rather than just being a static image over the top you can actually rotate it and you can modify the rotation speed so uh, let's let's kick this off and have a look at it and start playing with what we can do so as you can see that's my light source off in the distance I've got the, my flares being used on it and as it comes past it will, yeah, the terrain everything obscures what it what it looks like so effectively we can change the colour of that light now, that flare as it's moving around. So it's move that so it's red, so we've got a red flare, and as we go through the light spectrum we change yeah, so we kind of funky green to golden sunlighty colour, back down to red. So we can alter that there, we can also alter the intensity of the light. It's also affecting the intensity of the rays as well. Let's put that back to three. Um, we can alter the scale of it, so we won't bother with that. We'll just leave it running. So, what we can now do as well. So we've got the density of it. So if we can, we drag that down. You can see it affects the density of the rays coming off. So basically, they're not as packed together as, as they are. So really, when it's really low, it's not particularly brilliant. But 
know if it's really high. It can, it's quite cool, but it also if it's if the others are quite high as well, it can really uh, give you a nice effect like this one. <laughs> so it's way, way too much. Well, for this particular use, for, depending on how you're using it in the scene, or depending on how you're going to set these, and also the weight. So it's basically the the, the strength of these. Let me put that back to eight as this thing rolls past. And this will be a nice glowy ball effect. Um, and then the exposure. So this one's reasonably low, but not too low. But we can bring it down lower. We can also have a negative exposure as we bring it back up. The higher the exposure, obviously, the more powerful the light is. Um, we can have the illumination decay so as it's dropping off to the edges. So I'll set that down to about 7.5. So you've got you've got less coming out here. Back up to one. I can move my camera about. Let's have a look at actually the. Uh, so if we switch the aspect ratio off. We get that squashed effect because our screen's squashed. But I can also, as I say, alter the source intensity from here as well. So using the the base one also set the color so the ray color is now red but the light source is still white and we can set the size as well so if we get a 50 500 you know, really big devastating looking ray to zero and then as I say we can rotate it as well let's change the flare to a blue one because it makes it a little bit clearer the energy and the physics has died down a bit, so let's walk up to the ray. So we stop the rotation. You can see these points that are always in the same place when I put rotation on. See the start that's slowly rotating around. I should be able to I'm put it back to the regular flare. I should be able to if I can get my collider on my camera to hit the ball, set it off in motion again. Did I hit it? I missed it. Yeah, I kind of want to go into the scene. Let me just turn it around a bit. Okay, cool. So, so that's it. As a, as a, you know, an object being rendered against an object in the scene, and as you can see, you've got quite a bit of flexibility on it. So let's have a look at it in a 2D scene. So there's my 2D scene, very basic, it's three layers of terrain. Uh, this mask is going to follow my um, my mouse pointer. Uh, the actual light source again is a point light and as you can see I've set it behind, well behind the, the rest of the scene. So if we, and uh, I've got it, so it's just rendering the blue flare uh, using that point light, and then there's obviously different settings because I want to have a slightly different effect in this scene. And so let's look at it running in 2D. As you can see, all the items, all the, the, the sprites in the scene, are uh, obscuring the light rays as well, so we can get some, some pretty cool effects. So as it comes around, I'll put my, uh, my alpha mouse mask in the way of the light. There we go really nice cool rays coming off of that <coughs> and again we can change these values uh, to fit whatever we want to do with this scene so let's have a look if we move the that we could move the uh, light up a bit move to five no too much four move across to the right two so now yeah so effectively you can you can move it about the light colours not as well so loads of different things again all the same options that we had in the last scene you can do here as well but obviously running in 2D so you're using your 2D games as well so let's have a look at the other demo scene so this is so I've got some tr basic um, tr unity trees in here uh, very 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 simple scene uh, some very basic trees basic terrain all this all the basic unity terrain stuff uh, would work awesome with any other terrain systems that are out there. Um, Gaia, I think, is one of them, which is pretty cool. It would look nice in that. Um, so let's have a look what this looks like. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our, our directional light 
is a, a light source and because it's a directional light it's now using uh, the light source's direction rather than its position in world space but it also if you look it's moved it's positioned the uh, the light source itself uh, where we want it so yes so it's even the trees which are uh, I think they've got a cut out uh, shader on them standard shaders even the tree um, leaves as well as the branches are all obscure in the rays uh, I can't remember if I put grass on here because the grass also yeah, I have some grass there as well even the grass will obscure the rays coming from the coming from the uh, from the system so we could raise the exposure a bit maybe even bigger rays under there really bright sunshine there bring it back down again five yes yeah, so effectively you see when it's off it's just you know, it's pretty bland really and then once we've got them on we've got some lovely lovely rays come out the scene so uh, I hope you like the demo hope you buy the asset um, if you do please leave a review let me know what you think um, all feedback is important you know, if there's anything you think you can improve on or make better that's great just let me know that would be awesome thanks for watching